Right, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is an interesting conversation to have at this point. Uh, we've actually been waiting to have this conversation for a while, so I'm glad we, we managed to put it together. Uh, for our audience, White Hat Junior is an Indian startup launched in 2018 that teaches children coding. Now, it was acquired by Baiju's for 300 million US dollars in August last year. It's also come under a tremendous amount of criticism for being unethical, for being aggressive in its advertising, for misleading people in its advertising, and also for being, uh, you know, for not handling criticism well and for blocking criticism. Now, um, there are several problems or there are several things that have arose in the last, uh, you know, in the last few months, one of which is, of course, uh, how these ads target children, how they sort of insist that children should learn coding and whether that's the right thing to do and how it is handled uh, criticism. The company has filed cases against those who have criticized them, uh, defamation cases running into crores and crores of rupees. And um, also they, they've come under a certain amount of criticism um, and ridicule for uh, videos of their staff and their teachers uh, who, uh, you know, videos of their staff and their teachers who apparently are not properly uh, qualified to teach. To answer all of these questions right now, Karan Bajaj, the CEO of White Hat Junior joins me for a live conversation. Uh, just to inform our audiences, I have not shared any of the questions with him beforehand and this conversation is entirely live. Uh, Karan Bajaj, thank you for uh, joining us in this conversation and thank you for speaking with me. Uh, my first question to you is going to be a very obvious one. Most of your advertisements say that you uh, that your business targets children between the ages of 16 and 14 to learn coding and design of apps. Could you please explain to us why you believe a 16-year-old needs to learn how to code? Um, I'll go one step uh, further, right? It actually goes from age 6 to 18. So, uh, so your question may be even more pertinent than why does a 6-year-old learn to code? Uh, so let me answer that question. Um, I'll start with how I started the company in, 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 in a two minutes time. I think any entrepreneurship journey is uh, so difficult that uh, the only way an entrepreneur embarks on a journey is because he or she has a very, very firm belief in the transformative effect of their idea, right? So why do I believe that coding for kids is such a transformative idea? Uh, I think overall, um, this started when uh, I read... Uh, very, very good piece of research from um, uh, the creators of Scratch, which is a self, uh, self-learning self coding platform for kids in uh, created by MIT in the US. And one of their conclusions was that kids who code early, the biggest effect that happens on them is this feeling that I can build anything in this world. Because when they use coding at that early age to put blocks together and start to see things form as a result of putting blocks together or write basic syntax and, and uh, like magically a rocket can go to the moon after they pull things together. They start to believe that, look, uh, everything in this world is an object that's created by someone and I can build it too. And uh, this had really moved me because uh, in, a, in my own way, uh, I had a very, very similar life view when I became a father and I thought of what uh, education for my kids would mean. I'd always thought that the that what I discovered very late in my life is uh, like I had a very conventional background uh, until at around age 28, I, uh, you know, left my job to write to backpack for a year and write a novel. And I realized that the 10 years after that, after I wrote my first novel, were very, very profound, very experimentative. I wrote one novel, then a second novel, then took a year off, uh, learned yoga and meditation, then, uh, you know, became the CEO of Discovery Channel. I, I, in, in all of that period, I was like building and creating. And I've, I found that was a very profoundly uh, creative period and experimentative period of my life. So I always felt that kids should have that feeling early. And uh, the whole idea behind Whitehead Junior was that when kids start coding early, uh, they start to get that feeling that, look, I can build anything, I can create anything. And there's very, very good research around how kids actually peak at creativity at age five. And then every decade, their creativity, actually, they keep testing, uh, their creativity keeps hubbing, right? So they test in the top two percentile or a top two percentage or the top 90th percentile of creativity at age five. By the time they hit age 12, they are at uh, in the 60th percentile. And then it keeps decreasing because more and more rules and systems enter their life. And uh, the combination of these things that when you code early, 
you get this feeling and this confidence that you're always going to build and create things in this world was very powerful to me as a parent and the whole idea of white hat junior was that i would uh, take this idea and turn it into a reality where kids would code and they would uh, walk out with the confidence that they'll build for their life you know and they'll create things for their life which i think is the most powerful so, thing that a kid could work with so if i understand yeah. correctly what you're saying is that if the, you believe that if a child learns to code at the age of 6 that they will le- they will have the confidence of being able to create anything in life how does that then reconcile with the fact that your advertisement said that they will earn 150 crore rupees from say a microsoft or they will get these fancy jobs and make a lot of money that is a completely different messaging that messaging is send your kids to coding school so they can start earning crores and crores of rupees it's not what you just said exactly so i think the i'll uh, take this into two parts right uh, is that advertising something that we should not have done absolutely uh, white hat junior should not have done any such advertising in terms of relative proportionality we are talking about 6 uh, to 8 pieces of digital creative among 1000 uh, like 800 900 uh, creative pieces right when in an early stage startup and which is the early stages of the startup uh, you don't have systems set up for every piece of advertising every piece of social media creative being vetted legally compliant you know somebody thinks that something is fun let's create a exaggerated character and think of it as a kind of a fun uh, thing let's put it on air you don't have the systems in place to set it up but can i would i say that we should not have done this advertising absolutely absolutely we I, I, like if you think of it just but again if i really reflect on um, everything i think uh, the moment the company was ab- in a position that it was able to set up these compliances which was in june of this year before any of uh, june of last year before any of the criticism came almost all of these creators were removed right and the criticism uh, so, so 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 forgive me creator. forgive me mr rajaj um, your right. in june this june last year your company was 2 years old and you were on right. the verge of a massive uh deal that you were signing with byjuice for 300 million dollars so obviously you were cleaning house because at that point that is when due diligence happens but i'm in a startup right now and it's not even a question about whether or not legal compliance is in place it's a question about honesty and it's a question about creating a character that doesn't exist and making promises that don't exist that you know you cannot fulfill you know a child of whatever age learning whatever kind of coding is not going to make 150 crore rupees from microsoft in a job or from google in a job that's simply not true so doesn't it then bring into question the ethics on which you have built this company if your first if the first sort of uh, tendency was to simply lie um i would not say that on on many counts once again so let's go into one by one right so your first point is that in june uh, prior to the acquisition i think the first time i actually even had a conversation with beju uh was uh like late uh, like in the in the middle of june right when we are talking about the creatives as a part of the compliance being done was uh, at the moment we were able to have a marketing department set up right so when you're talking about uh the early stages of a startup when you are very uh, your number one focus always ends up remaining on product quality right and in in this case we are running a system in which there are uh, thousands of teachers on the platform there is a curriculum there is a live operation happening there are one on one classes happening and at this stage uh, there are 20 30000 live classes happening a day at that stage itself there were a few thousand live classes happening a day you are extremely focused on building the robustness of a product quality in in no, terms you, of you, like you were at 23000 live classes a day but you had no marketing department we are at 20000 uh, about 30000 live classes a day today at th- that time we would be about a few thousand classes a day and we would have a very very skeleton marketing department with a couple of people in it right which would and, be and maybe so, one so the wolf the wolf gupta ads were put out without a marketing department with a marketing department how, how would they very, design whose idea was it very skeleton marketing department again rather than naming individual people and trying to deflect responsibility i would rather take responsibility and say that uh, every piece of creative should uh, have been run through a compliance check and then put on air right uh, the or put on put on digital but out of 800 900 creatives a few creatives did not uh, meet that standard of compliance and were put on air and i would say the company should not have put them on air but uh, the logic behind somebody thinking that this is like a fun way of showing a forest compish character who's like really uh, like doing extraordinary things with coding that's like it's a it's a perspective which is uh, 
I don't think it should be done at all. So, right. So I think now when I, uh, I at this point itself, I'd said it multiple times during the period of time that we should not have put this on air, on, on digital air. But we are talking about eight or nine pieces of creative out of thousand. And uh, the, the, like almost everything else, I would say, if you look at the, as you talk about the ethics of the company, which I think is a very important question. Um, let's reflect on that a little bit, right? Uh, we have had... Uh, 11,000 teachers who are a part of the platform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 11,000 teachers have been a part of the platform. We build systems right from the first day that all of them get uh, completely fairly compensated in exactly the way their contracts are written in, in how uh, they are being uh, executed. Every part of the, the entire financial due diligence with Beju, for example, happened in a, in a barely a couple of weeks time because every cent of the company was extremely well balanced. I, I would say... All parts of the company from a financial management perspective, a legal management perspective, were very, very robustly set up. And marketing departments take times to form to become completely uh, robust in their setup, right? And I think it took us right from, like I would say, April, May, June, when we started to scale, we started to form that. And immediately after that, we started to remove any digital creative that we did th thought did not f uh, fit the company's ethos at all. Okay, so I, and I still find this a little difficult to digest because you just sure. said that the Wolf Gupta A was a joke, which uh, they don't look like a joke. There's nothing in that creative that suggests that it's funny or you know that it's any sort of satire. And you also said that it's one. It was it was one among thousands of creatives that you were putting out at that time. In a digital ecosystem, on a typical, if I if I really count from uh, the period of January to June, July we would have tested or put together about 800, nine piece, 900 pieces of digital creative. When you think of all of the digital- 900 pieces of digital creative without, with a very skeletal marketing department, no agency? No, no agency at all. All in-house creative, graphic all designers. All in-house creatives. And who was yeah, approving? Did you, did you approve we, these ideas? So again, that's what I'm saying. Like in a conventional setup, when you're doing, um, like, you know, I was came from Procter & Gamble, then I ran Discovery. If I think of what the Procter & Gamble process or the discovery process would have been, I like had a discovery in India. You had a proper ecosystem set up, right? Where it's a assembly line, right? Where somebody comes up with the creative, it's gone to a graphic designer, which goes to a, like a, a like an approval, approving authority, which goes to a legal legal review before it's put on air. In a startup at those early stages, somebody comes up with an idea and it's put uh, put on digital, right? So that's how it, unfortunately- So, so, so you didn't uh, approve these ideas? I, no, I mean, like we are talking about uh, 800, 900 pieces of creative. If I approved all 900 pieces of creative step-by-step step on a daily basis, we would be talking almost a full-time job of a marketing head at the time when the company is, uh, adding teachers, adding students, setting up call centers, setting up post sales operations, you know, like there's a lot that the company is at that point doing. So obviously I like, I can't say that I would have got a chance to even, even if I had done it, I, I as I said, my reflection is that uh, the same time that the company and any entrepreneur is extremely focused in the beginning phases of the company in setting up a product quality. So your, your, your zero to one journey, which is very early in your journey is just trying to stay afloat, right? Okay. That's was my- So, 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 so do I understand by this, uh, Mr. Gupta, that the yes. Wolf Gupta, uh, sorry, Mr. Bajaj, that the Wolf Gupta ads were not approved by you, or you didn't yeah. see them in person before they went out. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes. Very, very similar to almost every creative that's being formed at that point of time, right? Any like extremely similar to what would be doing at that point of time. But I would say, 2018, uh, the company started in December 2018. It takes uh, the zero to one phases coming up with the functional business model. And then uh, the kind of the one to 100 scaling phase is being able to scale all the systems. And I think that mm -hmm. was the focus of the company. And then you set up okay. a legal system, which is robust. So, so, right? uh, but I mean, uh, as uh, you know, I, I know, of course, that any size of company is almost and, and today uh, obsessed with messaging, right? You're obsessed with the ethos of your company, the messaging, how people are going to view you. What was your brief at that time? What was the messaging you wanted to put out that, you know, resulted the, in this, um, you know, in, in this communication? The brief has never changed from the start, right? The brief of the company from the start has been, kids should be builders and creators. That's been the start of the company. Again, would, once again, am I saying that these ads are on the brief? They're obviously not on the brief, right? As like, I mean, I, I've said that again, that I would say that uh, we should not have put these ads there. 
Okay. So, um, so let me just, and, and I'm I'm still dealing right now with messaging, and we'll come to the rest of it in a bit. But uh, let me take a look at these other ads that uh, that have come out. Sundar Pichai has been used extensively for your communication. Uh, so has Bill Gates. Um, are either of these individuals brand ambassadors, or are you just using them as examples? They are. They were again put on as uh, inspiration for kids to learn coding right i think that's the idea of was in the phase of creating the category inspiration for kids to learn coding right that's what it was never uh, claimed that they were brand ambassadors of the company okay um, and if we look at these ads um, you know uh, did did they when they made these statements did did they say it with you know with to have to do with kids learning coding at a particular age or is it just a random statement that has been picked up and attached? You have to look at all the creatives. For the most part, uh, in some form or the other, they were talking about coding or technology. And uh, like in, in some form, the idea was that they were uh, like inspired by coding or they uh, like all, all of them almost. In fact, if I uh, reflect on everybody who's uh, uh, like uh, been a coder in early childhood or even has not coded in early childhood, but is in, associated with technology, I think across the board, you would say everybody recommending uh, coding uh, for an early childhood as a tool for building creativity. I think almost is everybody- there, Is there evidence that Sundar Pichai learned coding between the ages of six and 15? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at Sundar Pichai's journey per se, but if I look at uh, Bill Gates, for example, or Mark Zuckerberg, they started coding early. I don't think. I think Sundar Pichai would have done coding probably after Google, or, or after like, Google, uh, right? So is it is it then uh, fundamentally misleading that you know we use this and it says age six to fourteen book free coding classes, and yeah. you've got his photograph, you've got his quote. Is that connection then conjecture and misleading? Because he has obviously not in person approved this advertisement. As All of said, this, thing, one second, we are, again, we are talking a, a set of creatives out of a very large set of creatives, almost all of them, which were around the theme of kids building and creating. So we can, again, I <clears throat> said this in interviews before, and I would say this again in interviews today, mm -hmm. that we should not have put these creatives on air. But, you know, okay. I mean, I, I can keep saying that and uh, I would love to keep saying that, but we should not have put these creatives on air, but I would say 90% of the creative body, even during this very unstructured high growth phase of a startup, were still on the primary message of kids should be builders and creators. And that's the same message that's on television today, was the same message that's been on television for the last few months. And in some form or the other, sometimes the tone has been right, sometimes the tone has not been right, but the message has always been very consistent around that. Or, or has attempted to be very consistent around that. You've also come under criticism um, for taking down negative reviews from various platforms uh, using an organization called uh, AIplex. Is that an organization that you use? Are you not open to criticism? Has, as a company, have you handled the criticism badly? Okay, one by one, let's break it. I don't, I've never worked with AIplex. So let's answer that question first. I've never worked with AIplex. I don't know um, where they are, what they do. So I haven't like ever interacted with them in any form. Second question is, uh, have we taken criticism badly? I think I would say open any site, uh, Mouth Shut, Quora, whatever, uh, uh, Trustpilot, you would see mostly positive reviews because that's the truth of our ecosystem where there are uh, like 200,000 parents and 11,000 teachers and a, and a million people who've taken a free, free trial class and are extremely positive and happy about the product and that's reflected. But there are its own spattering of negative reviews which exist, right? So we, uh, if, I, if I look at how we respond to that negative review, the reaction there is that, uh, like, can you tell us your particular example and uh, we'll try to like help you solve the problem. So I think overall, um, uh, the reaction to, to, to criticism has been uh, like exactly what any responsible company would do. Regarding the third question you have is that have we taken down posts, accounts, etc. I think that's giving way too much power to a, a very, uh, for a, like a 12 to 18 month company at that point of time, right? At best we can, what we can do is that if there is a completely uh, like something which violates a trade trademark or is an abusive comment, at best, you can flag it to the platform for their review. After that, we have no kind of like uh, authority to tell the platform whether to take down that post or to uh, take down that person. If somebody is constantly posting 
negative vitriolic stuff, then the platform takes it down, right? We don't have the authority to do that. Talk to me about the Pradeep Punia case. You filed a defamation case of 20 crore rupees um, against him. Why did you do that? See, um, the criticism to the company, there has been a lot of criticism for the company and there's been a lot of positive, uh, you know, uh, reviews for the company, right? We've had our share of success. We've had a share of criticism and all that is fine, right? I think the moment you cross a legal boundary, so in this case, there were, um, I would just say very particular so that we are very particular. There are two instances, right? Uh, one is that uh, our terms and conditions clearly indicate that you can't sign up for a fake trial class. You can't take a fake trial class with multiple different aliases as an adult to harass and badger a teacher, right? We have 11,000 women teachers on the platform, all of them extremely educated, extremely qualified. You can take up a trial class and, and if you do that with multiple aliases and you exhort 300, 400 other people to take up a fake trial class just to bully and badger a teacher, then that's not a criticism. That's an illegal activity because you violated a term in terms and conditions and you've used that to make actually significant harassment on a woman, right? Have you, like we've talked about criticism, but have you looked at the impact of somebody taking a class, putting that uh, badgering and putting that video all over the internet. That's one, let's, let's to complete that thought, right? The second thing is uh, hacking into the internal system of a company, which is Slack, right? Cherry picking messages out of that. On a given day, we have 70,000 messages in Slack. Cherry picking messages out of that with pictures and putting that on the internet. That's very akin to Faye. You are a, obviously a public personality and I'm sure you have your fans and you have your critics, but your critic can't get into your email hack that email and put images of you and uh, images of others who are a part of your email all over the internet to make a point about you. That's an illegal I don't agree, activity. But, but so if, uh, if, if I may, Mr. Bajaj, that amounts to the two things that you pointed out. And I, I agree right. that harassment of women is a severe problem on the internet. That comes under harassment. There are two IPC sections for it. Harassment yes. of women and again within the uh, IT Act. And yeah. hacking of your messaging service is then data theft, right? Neither yes. of this amounts to defamation. How did you bring yes. in a criminal defamation into this? Since this uh, case in particular is under subjudice about the legal and the criminal aspect of it, I would rather okay. say that if, apart from this, any other question in your mind would be wonderful to answer, but uh, take this as a broader boundary that there has been no reaction to criticism at all in any negative light. If there is criticism, if, uh, just to complete the thought, if there is criticism that's helpful, I've made the systems better. If the criticism is unhelpful, I've ignored it. The what, moment about, the what about the case yes. then you brought against Anirudha Malpani, who is a uh, who is a angel investor, you filed a 14 crore rupee defamation suit against him? I would say at no point at all, without getting into particular cases, particular pieces and particular criminality versus uh, the uh, uh, the defamation part of it, I would say the only time there has been a reaction in the court of law has been if there is a criminal uh, if 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 there is a criminal or any anything that's breaking the legal boundary, right? So I would say I I would keep it at that, right? So in answer to your question on does criticism impact, I think negative criticism if it's helpful has led to better systems, positive uh, and uh, negative criticism which is just vitriolic has been ignored. But criticism at any point of time, which is leading to any uh, uh, crossing a legal boundary, there is no other option left for a company which has seventy-five percent women other than to do this. You keep right. you keep other saying you keep saying women, but we'll come to that in a second. I just want right. to ask you this: We both worked for big companies, and we know that one of the go-to's that large companies go to when someone when they face a lot of criticism is to file defamation because it spooks ordinary citizens from criticizing in public. I don't want to face a legal case. So yeah, really though, but they got the in Kiba me, but I break a defamation cases by current you can keep us the very, very lawyers. Okay. Normal citizens, parents who want to come onto social media and write about a bad experience don't have the big lawyers. It's a way to scare them off. Is that the tactic? here? I've never in my entire career, including with discovery as a CEO or um, like any of the companies that I've worked before, big or small Procter and Gamble, mm -hmm. etc. Have uh, ever uh, filed a defamation case or use that as a tactic to bully or intimidate anybody. And I would say in this case, once again, we are the bullied, not the bully at all, right? In some form, I was very aware that the moment uh, this would be done, 
there would be an oversimplified narrative about uh, like you know protesting against criticism it's a very oversimplified narrative i once again there's so much you know positive and negative that's being said about whitehead junior today months ago after the acquisition when they were so limelight on us nobody was like ever uh, like we never reacted legally unless a legal boundary was breached and when you are running an organization which has 75% women right uh, 100% teaching staff that's women and uh, within that employees who are women who's um, uh, who's i would say safety is being threatened right the psychological safety of the person is threatened daily right when she takes a trial class because she doesn't know who's at the other end because the other other things here without actually naming individuals here and in in this particular case but the other aspect here is that 350 400 people there was a group formed online to say to do exactly that same thing every day so now there are 400 such people doing that same thing every day if you don't react would you tell this would you say this is criticism and you should be okay with this criticism so, so or so 400 people were taking trial classes to check Correct. the uh, the qualification of your teachers to badger the teacher there is no checking the qualification as a kid who's a legitimate kid who's actually experiencing the trial class as a kid versus with the explicit intent of an adult badgering the teacher is so not, are adults should... allowed to sit with the children during the trial absolutely. class yeah, yeah absolutely they are, are and they should are adults allowed to ask questions during the trial class they should absolutely they should At and they are at what point does that turn into badgering in your opinion it turns into badgering when uh, the same adult takes classes with different kids uh, because uh, you've not taken one class you've taken five six different classes Okay. in order to explicitly badger a person right that's what it is so at that point where you're no longer a parent or a associated uh, entity for the kid but just a random person who's taking multiple classes to uh, with the sole intent of badgering a a teacher that's i think uh, completely i would say it's like again i would say fay the equivalent when we reflect on this is that if 300 400 people made it a mission to attack your email account and uh, put all your pictures on the internet daily your reaction to it would not be about criticism or not your reaction would it be a legal uh, it's a legal boundary that's been crossed it's a personal okay. boundary that's true i mean that that again i uh, my reaction to that would be to file a case of theft and hacking but my understanding of defamation is that it need necessarily be a lie in order to qualify as defamation and uh, the yeah. onus then is on the person filing to prove that what was said was in fact untrue so again that like you said is a matter of subject but i just yeah, want so to so there is there is a question. criminal angle to it there is a legal angle to it i think the court did, did decide as you rightly said that uh, there was an injunction passed because of this reason right on the court also reaching the same conclusion on what was said was untrue and uh, uh, like uh, harassment so that was what also decided but again as i said there is no for us a startup running a startup and scaling a startup is a extremely consuming full time task nobody i think nobody who's running a startup would want to get into the quagmire of uh, legal cases and criminal cases unless they are pushed to a corner where they have to do it to protect a broader organization right otherwise why would you do it there's no win for you at all i want to i want to also mr bijaj shock about your marketing team for a little bit if i may on your sales team uh, there's been some criticism of your sales team who apparently uh, based on some uh, you know articles written in the on the internet they call up parents who have taken one such trial class and badger them into uh, actually signing up for the year going as far as saying your child will fall behind and amount to nothing if you don't teach them coding do you have a comment on this is this part of the yeah, brief not part of the brief are these just no. overzealous sales people what's going on so i have a comment on it right so my comment is that um there are more than 1 and 1/2 million trial classes that have happened on the whitehead junior platform right free trial classes 1 and 1/2 million trial classes that have happened right since the company started right mm -hmm. there are 200000 or out of those are actually paying customers on the platform who are actually taking the classes and liking okay. them daily right out of 1 okay. and 1/2 million cases the best that we can do right and this is part of the systems that were actually built by the company very early if i say the marketing was not built early these were a part of the systems built by the company very early where what we are doing is that every sales call is audited 100% of sales call is audited through a technical system which has been fed into what is uh, the the kind of the core selling pitch and what are any words that construe miss selling any kind of word which construes miss selling is flagged by the technical system 
as a uh, as a audit error and there is a zero tolerance policy against it and we built systems we put salesforce in for, uh, in place which is salesforce on which we built all these systems right we put salesforce in place very early like i would say july 2019 mm-hmm. uh, right uh, or like 6 months into the company we put a salesforce uh, system in place and after that on top of that we built audit systems and we kept kept building systems on top of it so that the cases of miss selling or any over representation of the company fell down to zero like almost like a six six sigma defect level what we are talking about here is a six sigma defect level out of a million million and a half cases if there is a few cases mm-hmm. you don't know the action that's taken been taken on them right there is a zero tolerance policy on any kind of misselling and every day we try to make the system better to catch all, all kinds of policies so so misses. you were very clear about the fact that this sort of talk is not acceptable absolutely not acceptable right we've uh, see again um, it, uh, like we if we if we reflect a bit right why did the company we've talked a lot about obviously all the things that the company didn't do right which is you know i i think that's like definitely one objective uh, the other part is that the company did um go without raising a lot of funds at at all right uh, and we raised less than 10 11 we raised 11 million dollars out of which all of it was in the bank at the time of the acquisition the company grew to a very very large scale in terms of students and teachers right and all of that was happened because kids were telling other kids right there was there was not about advertising it was about kids telling other kids as a result our acquisition costs were so low of the customer right as a result we raised so little funding to reach that scale of uh, revenue right because and and users because kids told other kids and nobody would tell other kids if they had a, a such a negative experience with sales or with marketing on a daily basis right or and, and so the, we are talking about like fringe cases that are being highlighted but fair enough i think they should interesting that you i'm glad you brought up kids telling other kids yeah. is it true yes or no that you ran a campaign telling children that if they brought on five other children that they would get a macbook pro free okay so absolutely yes right so absolutely yes we uh, have a referral program where if uh, a kid is uh, referring other kids then um, the other kids the kids that they referring get free classes and they get gifts that change right sometimes it's a robotics kit or it's a macbook pro right it's a class is that ethical uh, mr bajaj is that ethical using children for a pyramid scheme there is no this a it's not being u- children like uh, it's parents and there is so let's define what a pyramid scheme is right a pyramid scheme is that uh, you're selling one it's a multi level program where somebody is selling something who sells something to someone who sells something to someone there is nothing like that a parent okay. who's referring other parents not to take the course by the way who's referring other parents to take a free class with white hat junior is uh, getting the 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 person who's referring is getting a free class and the parent who's eventually if the parent if the parent who he has referred to has had a good experience is uh, uh, if if they have referrals then they get a a gift from the company yeah so in that sense uh, i would say any like if you look at the best examples of referrals that have been done in the world right like a dropbox where uh, every person who refers a dropbox gets 150 mb of storage free mm-hmm. these are classic classic examples of how referrals are But done well no, for your, the parents your, are... your gifts i understand what you're saying your gifts yeah. that you said that you give out and i've read only about the macbook pro uh, you did say yeah. you had a robotic skit and a couple of other things yeah. are these targeted at the parents or targeted at the children are the gifts for the, the parents or the gifts for the children the communication happens with the parent the communication is happening for the parent completely it's like any referral program right any referral program where in which you tell a friend about something that you like and the other person is not expected to buy it by the way the other person has the option to experience the product is gets a referral benefit i think it's like a classic referral program it was just a like it was in a technology linked referral program where we are talking about technology we are talking about robotics kits or macbook these are linked to the theme of the company right i can't offer 150 mb of hard storage hard drive storage like a dropbox does because that's linked to their product right so in our case this technology is the coding is the product right so we are offering uh, to the referee a free class to the person who's referred and then uh, the referral gets a, a a reward right that's like a classic referral program so i feel like these are what if a user is happy with the product that's only w- what they refer and then after that the person who refers is not forced by anybody to take so it they take a free like class. you said the, the your kids telling other kids so you've got a referral program after which someone then um, you know it, it takes a it takes a trial class in which yes. 
you've specified that they can't take more than one trial class or they can't badger the teacher. And then the sales team steps in and follows up with the person who's taken the trial class, right? Absolutely. That's how it so works. After, after, yes, so exactly. So you take a free trial class and after that, if you have a good experience, you take the course. If you don't have a good experience, there is no pressure to take the course at all. And then once again, as we were talking about the ethics of the company, we are probably, I, I don't know of many, maybe I don't want to state that the only company, but the, among the few companies I know, which has an anytime refund policy, right? There is no limit at all on when you can take a refund from the course, right? You could be at your 40th class and you could take a refund for the full course. You could be at the 50th class. There is no two weeks, one month, number of classes, no limits at all. If you're not happy, we've set up an entire refund team whose job is to process your refund in the fastest time possible. And 90% of our refunds are processed within three days, right? We, we go after the credit card company to say that, look, process the refund as fast as you can, right? Okay. And the reason is, that, uh, just, to, just to complete, uh, sorry, yes, go ahead. Please, sorry, you finish. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I said like this was once again in education, like it hadn't hap like ha happened I, not many times at all where we are offering refunds at any point of time and somebody's unhappy with the course because that was the confidence that we had in the course. And we made it a point that every customer got that refund within three days, right? Because of the confidence in what we were offering. These were the ethics that I think has uh, led, led people to be very happy. Some of the happiest people were people who were uh, experiencing these kind of uh, services from the company. Yeah. Okay, cool. Could you, would you be able to tell me the size of your sales team in personnel? Sales team, I mean, like it would be um, about 40% uh, of the company right now. Which is in numbers? 40% uh, would be sales and operations. So about So the number would be uh, 2,000 uh, right now, I would say. Uh, 2,000 sales people. Um, yeah. And what is their message? So let's assume I took a trial class with my child and one salesperson yeah. is then following up with me, what are they allowed to say? They are allowed to say exactly what the course offers. And Which the course is, is uh, very clearly offering uh, in the, it depends on the age group, but for early grades, there is a very strong focus on logic in the beginning, sequence, structure, commands, algorithms, like uh, using that and block-based coding to write basic code. As you progress in the course, you are able to go to syntax, right? You write JavaScript, you learn Python, and you create your own mini games and apps. And as you progress after that, you get an exposure to space technology and data modeling, and you're able to create more complex apps. So it's exactly what they are, uh, like they are saying exactly. What's going to Forgive me, my dog Not gets dog. it. <laughs> um, if, if someone, if, if your salespeople deviate from that script, are parents allowed to call you with a complaint? Who should they call? If, if they say yeah. more than what you have just called out. Yeah, so I think uh, we've set up some of the most easy escalation mechanisms, right? On our dashboard, there is a 24-7 call center number that you can call anytime because we, have, uh, we are operating in uh, markets outside India as well. Um, should I wait, Faye? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, not really, yeah. So on a dashboard, there is a number that you can call at any point of time, 24 seven. There is a, a ombudsman process in which you can reach directly to the CEO's desk. You can just drop a note straight to the CEO's desk if the escalation mechanism of just calling somebody hasn't worked, although there is a 24 seven call center staff. Beyond okay. the external, there is a, beyond the internal ombudsman, which is right directly to the CEO's office, there is also an external ombudsman with a retired judge that's been set up. Although uh, there has been like so far none complaints so far, but there's an external ombudsman which is set up with the judge so that people can uh, file their consumer complaints there. So we've set up multiple layers so that the customer is just one button away from raising any kind of escalation and there is a very, very prompt resolution. I think these are the principles that has led to the company, uh, right? Like in, in barely 18 months time, uh, you know, having uh, like so many students and teachers who were so satisfied. Just to give you some numbers again, uh, the net promoter score on the platform was 68, right? Uh, the, the internet average is more like 23. So net promoter score is the level of happiness on the customers. The refund rates of the company, despite offering an anytime refund is less than 5% on a cohort basis among the lowest. Uh, the renewal rates are 70% plus. Outside India, the renewal rates are 80% plus. These are numbers that were unheard of before, right? And that led oh, to- so, so, Mr. Bajaj, you're saying basically that, um, you know, there are ways and if, if if a parent has experienced any of these things that they can get in touch with you directly, get in touch with the company, file those complaints. You're very clear about the fact that your 2000 member sales force is not allowed to badger the parents. 
it's not allowed to say your child will fall behind your child will miss out your child will not be able to compete these things are not okay would it, would you be comfortable with with the the fact that if i said right now if there's a parent watching this interview who faces such a problem that they can get in touch with us on our youtube channel would you be willing to address those complaints as well 1000% okay yeah i mean like overnight you know so i mean like we are trying to set up as many systems as you can to reach us if you have any uh, any complaint whatsoever i would like want to do that right and again as i said out of a million and a half cases are there cases where this would have happened yes and we would love to kind of correct that there were so many cases where i have said that look uh, if, if there has been such a case then offer offer classes for them to free to experience the product right o- over and above the trial class because obviously the whole idea of the company was to be extremely customer centric that's why you see these kind of metrics that are very unusual in the edtech industry or in any industry for that matter whether that's net promoter score renewal rates refund rates being so low are you does your sales team function on incentives the number of people they convert to customers that's how they get paid and would you Not say the- for a let me right. yeah so would you say yeah, for yeah, a business sure. that is designed at making children feel like they can create anything it does seem from all of the things that have been written about that your sales team and your marketing team is extremely aggressive which doesn't really reconcile um, to what you said your purpose was it's very good to look at mathematics because see it's very easy to like you know like for anybody to hurl accusations left right and center right so let's look at our let's look at the mathematics right the sales team's incentives as a, po- a component of their salary if i really look at just that number in the last 6 months right uh, or take any unit of time it's less than 15% less than 15% of their salary uh like i worked uh, again as i said if uh, you know i worked for procter and gamble discovery etc every mm-hmm. sales uh, team in some form or the other will work on incentives but incentives as a component of salary is such a small proportion of their overall salary so where is the incentive to miss sell right the incentive is obviously to follow rigorous systems so that you are uh building a career here right so that's obviously the that's how the system has been set up to be i have a source that told me that you were looking that you were prepared to withdraw the cases against pradeep uh, punia and mr malpani uh, dr malpani is this true better not to i would say we would rather not get into the legal uh, cases and you know the status of them as i said before there's like a uh, uh like that's probably the only matter that i don't want to uh, you know like uh, okay. get into subjective stuff right so i think other than that obviously please feel free to ask me anything but uh, subjective stuff i don't want to get into yeah okay um as i said right this- see we have no we have like my general message overall phase that we have no like we are probably among the most talked about positive negative negative at times positive at times startup we have no like a desire to react to anything which is uh, like uh, like you know a- anything which is true we will have a desire to react to and make it better anything that's not true if we are okay with that right that's part of being in the public domain anything which crosses a legal boundary and becomes a source of emotional harassment to a very very strong 75% women force uh, has to be reacted to so other than that i have nothing more to say on that right it's that's okay. the only reaction so so let's let's talk about the teachers now there has been criticism that the teachers are inexperienced underqualified mm-hmm. and are basically calling out a script so the the trial class that they're they're giving the child and the classes are after that is basically a script that they're reading through uh, and they don't know enough to actually be teachers and they aren't able to adequately answer questions that are asked of them what is your response to this again let's go to the like let's look at both the data and some kind of like can, do you mind if i show something for a second uh, if i could share my screen and then uh, oh. i'd be able to so i i would prefer if you answer the question first because uh, you know i i cannot yeah. verify as a journalist what you are going to show so i can't uh, you know if you just answer the question first and tell me what you're going to show yeah yeah then- sure i was about to show you an ernst and young verified you know uh, like uh, report so so in a way you know i was trying okay. to make the verification task a bit easier but um let's again go back to the mathematics right there are 70 uh, uh, 70% of teachers on the platform have a very strong engineering slash coding slash technical background right that's what they have and uh, 30% of them have a strong mathematical background exactly how the course is structured in grade 1 2 3 
the focus is very heavily on logic constructs, like right? sequence structure, algorithmic thinking before they go into coding syntax, uh, they go into coding syntax at a later stage. Grade four to ninth, you go into syntax early. So people with a coding background are teaching grade four to ninth and non-coding background are teaching grade one to three. Now let's look at the systems that have been set up, right? Uh, on a given, uh, uh, like uh, on a given pool, we have thousands of applicants daily, right? Out of every hundred applicants, one will be selected after a very, very rigorous interview process in which every applicant is called, uh, every, uh, the applicants who are shortlisted via call go through three demo processes, right? Live demos with, uh, uh, with uh, our faculty. And then they're selected to be on the platform after which they have to go through a learning management system, which has uh, 1500 hours of content uh, monthly out of which they have to qualify each class that they are teaching on the platform by going through the class, answering quiz questions, answering variations of the code that come into it so that they have complete uh, understanding of the, uh, the, the concepts in the class, right? And uh, then they are teaching a cadre class, right? We have, as I said, about 20,000 plus live classes happening daily, depending on the day. Weekends could spike to 30, 40,000, right? On 20,000 plus live classes a day, that's what I wanted to show you. It's an Ernst Young uh, uh, approved, uh, you know, like database. Our average ratings are 4.8 plus out of five daily, right? Thousands of classes happening daily. Average ratings given by kids are 4.8 out of five. Monthly, there is a net promoter score from the parent. The parent rates the class at among the highest net promoter scores that's ever happened in this industry. And that's because the teachers are extremely qualified at what they do and how they deliver that to the kids, right? And that's why the kids loved the course and that's why the ratings are so high. So I think once again, um, any, any way you look at it, the systems were designed in this case very early so that the teachers had a very robust recruiting process through tech. And then after that, they had very strong learning management systems. And after that, once again, they had a very strong input output loop of data coming to us so that if there was even one class which had a rating of less than four, we were immediately correcting for that because we had the data flowing, which still flows. So I would say that uh, like the teacher qualified and the system is uh, set up so that the, that the most qualified delivery is happening of every class on the platform. Mr. Bajaj, are you comfortable answering some questions that um, our audience is asking at this point? 100%. Okay. Um, Aniruddha has asked a question. He says, can Mr. Bajaj expand on what he means when they refer to space technology and how that connects to JavaScript? Um, space technology is part of the third module. So we have an eight class module, a 48 class module and 48 to 144 class module in which kids in early grades are using again, block-based coding to do space simulations, simulations of um, different space activities like a rocket launching in the moon. In later grades, they're using a coding syntax to create uh, uh, algorithms to solve a space related problem like the density or a mass of an object. And they're using, again, creating algorithms and using that syntax to actually solve uh, like a, or create an equation to solve a problem like that. So there are multiple classes in each level which are linked to uh, like are, are in the space technology domain, some of which require syntax, some of which don't require syntax uh, in early grades. Uh, we have another question from Joyji Paul. He says, I'm a software engineer working at Microsoft. I want Mr. Bajaj uh, to let us know the misleading ads that get put out put extremely, they put a lot of pressure on kids as well as parents. Are you aware of the fact that putting out ads, telling parents that, you know, your kids need to learn this one more thing, apart from the fact that they're, you know, stuff that they're already learning, apart from the schooling that they're already paying for, the tuitions that they're already paying for, here's another thing to teach your children so they don't fall behind. Are you aware of the pressure that that puts on children and on parents? I'm a father and I have two kids and um, one of them who's in that age takes the course and um, her experience is very similar to, I would say, the 175, 200,000 other kids who are on the platform, which is kids love this. They love doing coding. There is no pressure at all that they face in their minds that they have to code to do to accomplish something. The joy is in building and creating. I'll take, there are so many such examples, right? And I could keep uh, going down the list of examples. You now there's a nine-year-old kid from Mizoram, right? Uh, her name is Mei Mei. She uh, didn't know coding. She, she, she learned coding at Baita Junior. She sees a bullying problem in her school, right? And she creates an anti-bullying app, right? Because she learned coding at Whitehead Junior, right? 
just imagine that person right she is not doing whitehead junior coding because there is some pressure to perform or do anything like that right she loves the fact that she sees something right which makes a difference to her one way or the other and she has a solution that she can build for it right now will this anti bullying app again the promise of the course is not that this anti bullying app will be uh, like downloaded by millions of people and will be supremely successful the idea is that at 9 year old if has had that feeling and that experience then just imagine the future put future of that person who's gonna uh, like uh, like how confident and how creative and how empowered she feels and these are the thousands of stories on the platform that make the uh, you know that make the platform successful and that makes everybody come and want to work here right that's a that's question the, from from tejas says if you are using open source technology like code.org why is why are you charging so much what is the value add see i think uh, that's like saying that a book is available for free and uh, why is a school charging any money right uh, because mm-hmm. like see the thing is that code.org we use code.org thinkable google dialog flow these are platforms right on the top of the platform we build our own curriculum look at how our curriculum is built right all the people who are building the curriculum are all uh, uh, you know like again not to trivialize just iit being uh, a symbol of quality but just in this case there are iit graduates who are creating curriculum we go through a very rigorous uh, process in which every class is tested audited data is flowed multiple times the cur- curriculum is made perfect there is a teacher and the teacher is dedicated one on one because the whole philosophy of this uh, the whole philosophy behind whitehead junior was that there are coding platforms that exist as self learning the value that we would add is a creative curriculum taught by a teacher who's meeting you where you are and encouraging you to express your creativity in the best form pl- possible by making the curriculum flexible as hard and as easy as it takes for you to be engaged in it right now there is a teacher and uh, we try to compensate the teacher to the best extent we can right now like i think if you if you reflect on it there are 11000 teachers whose salaries now are equivalent to what an iit or an im graduate would make make straight after graduation and just think of the power of this right there are teachers who are teaching kids from all over the world and kids in us australia new zealand are loving what they are doing right they are loving the curriculum but they are loving the passion and the 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 depth of uh, delight that the that they are having with these teachers and they are women who two years ago were not a part of the workforce right and i think that's the if in in india colleges uh, there are 50% of women in colleges and in the workforce there are less there are about 20% of women in in the workforce every year there is a 30 point skill gap in any country which has this level of skill gap is uh, or or uh, like participation gap in the workforce is losing tremendous value right and we were able to get these women and make them uh, coding and now maths teachers for kids all over the world and create i would say value out of uh, like tremendous value here for you for said them. 70% of your teachers are um, are tech teachers 30% are math teachers what is their basic qualification and how were they not part of the workforce two years ago then so 70% are engineering or, or technical or coding background 30% have some form of mathematical background which could be a bsc or a ba in mathematics uh, and they were not part of the workforce because of exactly the reason my mother was not a part of the workforce right she was a topper of delhi university uh and uh in in economics and she was an army officer's wife right so all her life she did she followed my father around right he went to leh ladakh he went to sri lanka he went to tezpur uh, she followed him around and she could never have a stable career and there are thousands of such stories right of not just army women there are women who after having kids become the primary child caregiver and then they are uh, through the platform they are able to do their child care responsibility in the morning teach kids from the uk in the evening teach kids from us in the night and still do their child care responsibilities the next day in the morning so uh, i would say india is full of stories like that right and all of them are we are able to tap into them and create uh, tremendous so, value so you were saying you have uh, 11000 uh, employees who are teachers who are mm-hmm. graduates who have graduate degrees in either uh, coding or in mathematics the graduate or graduate degrees in engineering or coding undergraduate or graduate degrees like college or uh, uh, like post grad uh, you okay. know like post college or post grad degrees in engineering or coding or uh, bca mca so the the range of uh, subjects that are linked to 
uh, and like most of whom were homemakers before White Hat came or uh, White Hat Junior came along. I, if I do a split, I think there is a, a very wide variety of stories, right? So you have uh, people like uh, like my mother, right, an army wife who, uh, whether she's a homemaker or not, is traveling with her husband. You have a large proportion of homemakers. Then you also have, uh, I would say. Uh, particular stories, right? There is a fair amount of Muslim women on the platform, or for example, uh, there is uh, there's an LG like there's a couple of LGBT women who didn't feel that in the workforce they were uh, either because they didn't want to travel outside work, uh, outside home in big cities, or they didn't feel comfortable in the work environment because of their particular choices. Right? There are there are enough cases like that. They have the ability now to choose a job that they love, teaching kids flexibly from home across the world. So that means that they can do their family responsibilities in the morning and do uh, teach kids in the evening in the UK, US, et cetera. And uh, it, it's a delightful job, which is flexible. And I think that's what I would say more and more entrepreneurs, I think there's tremendous potential here because uh, uh, we are losing so many people in the workforce because uh, it's an or for a woman, right? She's either taking care of her family or she's uh, in the workforce here. It's an and she's taking care of her family and she's a part of the workforce. There's a question from uh, Dhruv, Dhruva Krishnan who says, uh, you have an ad that gets aired where um, VCs are falling over each other to buy a child's idea that he learned at White Hat Junior. Does that contradict what you just said? Yes, absolutely. So that's why the, like, this is all part of the ads that are not there anymore. Like we're talking about a phase which doesn't uh, there, right? So right now the ad is about a, kid, the, a real kid, three real kids who are building apps, right? Who have built real apps, right? They are actual mm -hmm. build apps, like the anti-bullying app that I talked about or a sign language app that a six-year-old made or a medical app that uh, like another 11-year-old made. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you now to just put very clearly before our audience what your commitment is going forward, because you have said repeatedly through this conversation in the last one hour that you had yeah. made mistakes, you accept that you've made mistakes, you have, you've also said that you've put in remedies. So would you then say that your sales team has been told now to not be as aggressive. Your marketing team has been told not to target children, not to target parents, not to tell children or parents that they are missing out, um, that your, um, you know, your referral scheme is not really a pyramid scheme, according to what you said. So th is this a commitment that you're making to parents across the country right now that you're not saying, listen, teach your kids to code, otherwise their futures will be over? I think I made that commitment on the first day of starting the company. So let me say that my commitment has been very singular. I, I don't think any entrepreneur embarks on a, especially I, like uh, your, your startup success rate is so low that no entrepreneur would ever embark on a journey with this idea that they're going to make money, right? The idea is that you believe that there is a transformative idea that needs, that the world needs, right? So my commitment from the first day is that Whitehead Junior will be about kids who will be builders and creators for their life. That will be the generation that's going to make us proud and every day I'm going to work. For. My commitment is that there is a huge base of uh, uh, women uh, in this in India who are not a part of the workforce and will become a part of the workforce through Whitehead Junior. And we are discovering as we go to Mexico, Brazil, that there is a similar thing happening in those markets as well. So I would love to have 100,000 teaching jobs come from uh, from women in the workforce in the next three years. And I would say daily, my commitment is that my systems get stronger and stronger so that at one day, Whitehead Junior is talked about in the same way a Procter & Gamble and Discovery is. And I think, uh, which is uh, companies with very strong spine and ethics and values. And I will strive every day to create a company with great uh, ethics and values and anything uh, which is, uh, like, you know, any mistakes that have been made in the scaling journey, absolutely. I like, you know, reflect on any mistake I've made daily and say, how do I get better? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, okay. I'd say nothing, nothing more profound right. than that. Uh -huh. you know? Karan Bajaj, thank you for speaking with me and answering all of the questions that I posed as tough as they may be. I appreciate it. We will keep an eye on this uh, story and on the movement of White Hat Junior. We're also uh, opening up the chat section of our uh, YouTube channel and the community section of our YouTube channel for parents who want to get in touch if you had uh, you know, negative experiences and we will pass on those experiences uh, to Karan Bajaj, who's given us a commitment on this channel right now.
that he will address every single complaint that comes forward and they're making a commitment that this sort of aggressive marketing will not happen or aggressive sales will not happen going forward. Thank you for speaking with us Thank to you. our audience who are watching. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.